Silence! Hey, we, we, we're moving it. I'm joking. <laughs> the crazy one? Are you sure you want to know about that? I'll be honest with you, I didn't have any idol. I didn't have any heroes. My mom, she's my idol. She's my heroes. And I, I, I grew up like that. Like many people ask me that question. They expect me to say, no, when I was young, yeah, I was looking about Romario, you know, because I was a striker before being a defender. But like I said, my real hero is my mom. The crazy one? Are you sure you want to know about that? I'm not sure you're ready about it. No, but you know, I, I, I did my book and my audio autobiography and people understand who's the real Patrice because people see you on the screen, you know, they see you on the football pitch and they think they know you. So that's why I did that book and I explained where I come from because, you know, the, the young generation, they just see like what they see on the, in the screen and, you know, the end. So it's a long journey and I come from a, a deep road, you know, I grow up in the street. I'm proud to, to who I become now because it was tough. It wasn't easy. <laughs> you have to be ready when mommy says the food is ready. That's what it is. You don't have even time to go and wash your hands because if you wash your hands, the food is already finished. No, but it's, it's, it's great, you know, but it's a massive responsibility also because, you know, thanks to my dad, 24 brother and sister, I'm like, I think, oh, he never watched the TV or maybe he lose the remote, but he was a busy man. And I've got like now 89 nephews. So you just like become like generous, sharing, you know, that's why I never judge people when they are only one child because they don't know about that. So I grew up with that, that people say, oh, Patrice, the way you love to share your energy, your positivity, you know, your happiness, whatever. I'm like, yeah, but that's the, that's the thing. I grew up in a big family. If from like, you know, some people, they say, Patrice, how are you? I say, I'm still alive. And they laugh when I say that. But it's because I feel blessed and grateful every single day in my life. You know, I, I was a kid, I used to, to, to beg in front of a shop to buy a sandwich. But even in that time, I was still happy. I'm passionate about life. I think like people have to be like, we're so lucky to be in life. That's why sometimes I say we're losing time for small things. You know, when God needs you, he doesn't call you, he just takes you. And why I'm passionate like that and why I want to show to people, because me is like no excuse. Growing to, to born to this world as a black person is already a disadvantage. Growing up in the street, you know, is, it's not being a gangster, it's about surviving. And that's why people don't understand sometimes. And being sexually abused at the age of 13 is a trauma. But all of that, you know, happened to my life. And I never give up. I always like, I was uh, talking to, to those kids and I was like, do whatever you want in life. Don't let anyone to say you can't. I always give that example of my French teacher, you know, when I say, she said like, what do you want to become later? And all my class uh, made, they were saying like, you know, lawyer, doctor, policeman, like good job. And I said, I want to play football. And everyone was laughing. Even the teacher was laughing and my classmate. And she she go even deeper. She said like, in 300 kids, they're going to pick one. Do you think you're going to be that kid? And I said, yes. And everyone was laughing. So today it's not like I want to take a revenge against that teacher. I just don't want that teacher to say the same things to other kids because me mentally, I was really strong. That's why when a kid, he say like, I, I want to become the president of the universe, even if it doesn't exist. I'm like, go for it. Make the sacrifice for it. You know, I, I, I love this game. It's a philosophy of life. You know, that's everything I just say. The way you see life, stay positive you know, happy. But it doesn't matter. Some, some day, like people say, someday I can be like down. But I always remind how oh, lucky I am. You know, how many people will dream to be at my place. So that's why I love this game. It's just everything I'm doing. Like now I'm doing this interview because I feel good. I feel your energy. I just scream, I love this game. <laughs> it just feels natural, you know. <laughs> yeah, uh, I think it was really important uh, to do a book because this is not for me. I think some people, they're doing like an autobiography to look good, 
you know everything is perfect no i want to explain to the to the young generation you know it's a long journey and many bad things happened to my life and many things i did you know when i was uh, living in the street it wasn't easy and i talk also about the sexual abuse but because i wanted to show to those kids like my first the first chapter is like i would say the savage boy is my favorite chapter because that's where i explain and that's when people understand wh who is Patrice Evra, you know. Like people see me as the captain of the na French national team as Manchester United, but they don't know my story. So suddenly when they read the first chapter, they're like, wow, these guys have done like so much and he get through or something. That's why I say for me, all my career and life, you know, is I would say quite, it's easy to reach the top of the pyramid, but to stay at the top. That's when you need sacrifice. That's when you need consistency. And that is all about my life. Like even now, stay happy. It's like, you know, it's not easy and you shouldn't force yourself. That's why you, you, you can allow yourself one day to not be grumpy, but just make sure like, you, you know, you flick the coin because it's really important. That's why you have to spread around the world that positive energy. But you know, my, my mission in Africa, first of all, I, I born in Dakar because many people doesn't know I'm from Senegal, my dad, even if I play for the French uh, national team. But my mission is really simple, is uh, to end the violence against children. That's the first thing. But also, I want to break that image of Africa being a, like a, a, a poor continent. Africa is the richest continent in the world. So what I want to promote is also that joy that happiness, the talent, you know, it's so much talent. They need support. They need an example. That's why I'm here to have an impact. That's why I'm open to every country. Like no matter if I from that, I'm, I feel like a Nigeria. I was in Ivoicos. I feel like an, I'm everything. We are all brothers together. And I think it will be selfish for me if I don't now give my time to them. You know, I retire, I can coach. I can do many things, but I just feel like as a human being, I can give more then when I was do when I was playing football, you know, I always say like, sometime in I do some funny video because I can be serious, I can be your clown. I love that, and I do some video and some people like put a comment, "Wow, Patrice, my dad passed away. I saw one of your video. This make me a smile." This is more important than winning the Champions League, because this is touch. I feel connected. I win so many uh, trophy, but you know when I meet the kids even this morning in Ivoicos in Dakar. That's when I'm like, that's why I, I know why I'm, I am on earth. And that people maybe don't know that side of Patrice, but I think it's time. I think I was, I was crazy. I think people like they were like, but Patrice, you're not focused. I was the DJ in the dressing room. I was the one putting like the playlist. Even sometimes, so Alex Ferguson was coming in the dressing room. He was listening to music. He was like, oh my God and he was leaving. So I started to play also for him some Frank Sinatra because he know, I, I know he loves Frank Sinatra, but I love doing that. I'm not focused on myself because I'm like, I know the way I prepare myself during the week. You know, I'm honest with myself. Then before the game, you know, we dance. Like if you come in the dressing room of United, when he was the real United, huh? your club, you will be like, it's a club inside. We were like dancing, like playing, laughing. But when, Ferguson come and he, five minutes before the boof, warrior, we ready. That's why some, some people, they don't know to, to, uh, to switch off and switch on. But us, we know, because we know exactly why we were here for winning. So that's why I didn't have any routine. It was just like having fun, being the, uh, like before the game, being the most relaxed. Because some people, some players, they just think about the game, what they're gonna do, they're gonna stress before the game. And you can't start to play a game with the pressure. Because it's like, you know, to wearing like, a, I don't know, a jacket with 10 kilo. You're going to get tired after five minutes. So that's why sometimes people, they don't understand. Some players, they get tired after five minutes because they play the game before, before even the game start. No, I'll be honest with you. Football has become more and more a business. Um, kids, they, they, they play more for the fame, uh, for the money, you know, for it's not the passion anymore. And I'm not afraid to say that. And also, I don't see that instinct like from the street. Like in Africa, you see like kids playing in the street, but in Europe, less, because they want straight away to be in academy and everything. So you lose the genius. My football is from the street. You know, you don't have any player like Ronaldinho because now everyone has to play two touch. 
they're a little bit like robots, you know. But also mentally, I feel like they're not angry because they got everything too fast. I'm not like talking at the old school guy, but I'm sorry if you earn like so much money in the early age, you lost and they don't have nobody to support them. So it's, a, it's, it's, a, it's gonna be a, a big problem. And also is the gambling also coming. So it's a lot of pressure. I think around the football now is really toxic. Before it was just like a pleasure. The football is for the poor people. It's having fun. Like I never play football because I, I, I think I was going to earn money. So everything changed. The, 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 the speed, the, the tactic. I, I just feel like now we, we're more like robots. You want me to leave? <laughs> oh, oh, this is disrespectful asking me that question. I want answer to that. I, he's, he's wearing the jersey, what I'm talking about. I don't even want to answer to that question. Yeah. Yeah, because now you play one game, you're the best player in the world. You play one bad game, you're the worst player in the world. But before, it was something different. Like I, I say, like even the Premier League, it was man, character. It was character, personality before talent. Now it's just talent. You see the player, you know, they're laughing. It's like, and it's everything about tactic. Before the game, I remember in the tunnel, you already know you're going to win the game. Like the, the, the I have a, a like, um, a way to say like when you play against Arsenal it's like you, you were like playing against your baby when you play against Liverpool you're playing against the enemy when you play against Manchester City you play against your nasy, nosy neighbor when you play against Chelsea was the most similar team and that's the one we have most respect and we were like when we're gonna we beat Chelsea we're gonna win the league so that was my philosophy I say that uh, maybe I will be in jail I don't know, maybe dead, whatever. Football saved my life. If you ask me what I would have done, but I didn't study for that, will be doctor. I think like it's a blessing to saving life. So that's the kind of job I will wish I could have done. Myself. I think my biggest enemy was uh, myself because I was such a confident player and people sometimes can, you know, I uh, think it's like, I was like arrogant. No, it's just like, because sometimes I was overconfident, but I play against a lot of players. I, I play against Cristiano, even if I play with him, Messi. But the one he annoyed me the most, and I, everyone is surprised when I say that, is James Milner. Because these guys was defending even more than, than you know, myself. And he's supposed to be a winger. So me as an attacking fullback, I was sometimes getting out of my, I was like, attack, man. And he was like following me everywhere. Even when I was going to the toilet, this player was like following me in the toilet. So James Milner was the, the one he was annoying me the most, man. <laughs> I think the, the it wasn't an advice, but it's, it, it was Sir Alex Ferguson, of course, when he say, Patrice, just be yourself. I just want you to, to bleed for the club, for the fan, and just like, this is your house. And, you know, my relationship with Sir Alex Ferguson, he always, I always say like, I've never been scared of Sir Alex Ferguson, even if he's a scary guy with the hair dryer. This is not like, legend is true. He make people, he make player cry. I was scared to disappoint him. So that's was the, the difference. But the best advice I think I had is when I was um, 18, and he was an Italian coach. And he say, uh, I remember we play a game, I was playing for Nice and I was playing uh, left winger and the fullback get injury. So the last 15 minutes, I, I take uh, his role and I play the last 15 minutes, I play very well. So everyone, wow, and we won 2-1 the game and the boss, everyone was happy. So, you know, for the next game, he say the team and everyone and he give me the beep and he say, you're going left back. I say, I'm not a defender. I said, oh, you don't want to play? I said, yes, but I'm not, a, I'm not a defender. He said, okay, you don't play. I said, no, okay, okay, okay. Even like goalkeeper, I'm going to play. And I hate playing left back. And he said, you know, you're good at it because you don't want to play left back. So I always, that's why I always attack because I, I refuse. I only enjoy, and this is true, enjoy playing left back when I signed for United. Before that, I was like, I'm not a left back. And because I was so stubborn with that, but actually I was like attacking with anger, with frustration, then I was playing good. <laughs>
Vous? Le blue! <laughs> le blue! <laughs> non, it is, it is, like you say, I think the, the biggest opponent of France is France. We have the best player in the world, the best squad, I would say. Like, it's too much talent, even on the bench. And, you know, this is sometimes it's really dangerous. Because when you think you're too good and you see in the, in the Euro, when we get beat by um, Switzerland, we were winning at the end of the game, like, boom, they score three goals. Like, this can happen. So that's why sometimes your biggest, you know, enemy is yourself. I, I love saying that. And to be fair, it's really open. We never know what's going to happen. But France are the favorite. <laughs> that's a very good question. To end the racism in football, people have to stop to be hypocrite and pretending they want to fight against the racism. Because I always give the example of the Super League. You see, when it was the Super League, I think like I, 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 I turn on the TV, I think it was like the end of the world. The fan, you know, even my ex-teammate being pointed like, this is a shame, those owners, they shouldn't have done that. The president of the UEFA and the, UEFA, uh, the FIFA, those uh, owners are snake and everything. So I look, I was impressed. I see the fan, you know, going to their, to the stadium saying, we don't want to be part of the Super League, everything. But I ask you one question. Why we don't have the same passion, the same energy when he's about to fight against the racism? The reason is because you don't touch any pockets. It's no money. Fighting in against the races, it's not, you don't win any money. So they shut down a project in less than 24 hours and it didn't even start. But actually, you know, if people want to do something, they can do something. Like when you see on your social media, when you talk about the COVID, straight away you receive a flag. But races, no, because people don't care about it. And that's why we have to, to be honest. I respect every, uh, I will say, program they fight. You know, when they say no races, I respect all of that. But we can do like much more. And it came from the education. Because it's not only about football, it's about the education. I say no any kids born as a racist baby. But it's about the parents, the way they teach him. School. To understand like now when you get abused because of your color or even lose your life, Enough is enough. I think, you know, silence is a crime. So that's why also this will be also my fight for everyone. Discrimination, bullying. We need to stop all of that. But when you talk about football, people, they can do more than that what they're doing. But when you don't touch pocket of the people, we don't care. Actually, I know you're going to be angry of that. The Jolof, Senegal. Yeah. So stop saying your jollof is for like in Senegalese people. It's the same rice I used to eat. My mom used to cook me when I was young, and we call it the chep. And actually, jollof. When you talk the Senegalese language, is wolof. To tell you how close it is. So hey, my Nigerian people, stop playing with me. Jollof come from her, sir. But I love it. <laughs> Everything, the energy, the people. Like we, we arrive at the airport, I, I, I feel home straight away, the love. That's what I mean. For me, this trip is so important because they even call me Evra bus stop. People playing in the street, Evra. Like I'm so connected to the Nigeria people without even knowing them. So that's what I expect in that trip. I want to be here, like I say, I don't want to leave this country. And I feel the love, the passion, the energy. It's just crazy. The people are here, like, you know, looking for my security, whatever. I can feel they really care and they're really happy for me to be here. So I'm excited. I want to discover. I want to see things. I want to feel that craziness, that happiness, that energy. So I just can't wait. Everything is open. Everything can happen. You know, we're talking about football. I already have my shelter in, uh, in Senegal. So this is important, you know. We, 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 it's not just about football. I can do the easy way. I finish my coach license. I can go with Manchester United, you know, many. But I can do more as a, as a, as a human being. And that's more my goal right now. But I'm open to everything. Maybe an academy, another shelter, be an investor, because there's so much talent in Africa and they need the support. So now I want to change things. I'm not, I'm not going to change everything. 
but I know I will do something.